Hey everybody, welcome back to another programming video. Today we're doing something a little bit different. In the last couple of videos I've been doing WPF things. And today I'm going to show you guys how to use Python to call an API to get the price of Bitcoin and other top cryptocurrencies. So um, hopefully you guys like this. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe. Uh, we've been getting a lot of, well, I've been getting a lot of subscribers recently and I appreciate everyone that has and uh, let's just jump into it so there's a few things that I need to talk about that you need to do before you follow along and the first thing we need to talk about is what kind of uh, API I am using for this and I looked I did some research beforehand I was looking around and I noticed coin market cap here has a free API that you can go ahead and use up to it says 10,000 calls in a month, which, you know, for me and you, I bet that isn't an issue unless <laughs> you see yourself calling it like every minute for the next, or not every minute, probably every 10 seconds for the next month, or I don't know. I highly doubt that's the case. So do me a favor, uh, go to Coin Market Cap, just type in Google Coin Market Cap API and set up a free account. You just need your email and to create a password, and then you get an API key, which is used to authenticate you. Uh, so when you make a call to this API, the API will say, okay, well, you are who you say you are because you have the key. Um, yeah, so that's what you need. And you might be wondering, what is CoinMarketCap? I have been looking at CoinMarketCap in the last two years. It's been like the go-to, and I think it's it's one of the most popular places to go on and look at top cryptocurrency prices, uh, stats like market capitalization, the trading volume, all this good stuff. So it's a it's a really it's a really popular site, and I figured their API would be pretty reliable to use. Um, another thing you want to do is you want to install requests. And requests is a library that we're going to be using to request to that API, where we make our request for them to send us some kind of data. Right? We're going to ask them, "Hey, what's the price of Bitcoin?" And they're going to send us that data back. So you want to do Python -m pip install requests if you haven't already and I think that's everything we need I was looking at the JSON library which it comes with Python so it's not anything you have to install anyway uh, but I don't even think it's necessary for what we're going to be doing and then here is my account you can see that I was fiddling around with the API earlier on my laptop I was um, testing some things out and I could regenerate a key and I could disable it um, but this is above where you see copy key is where you can get your key. I'm not going to hover over it because it will show my key. Not that it matters because, like I said, I can regenerate it. And what I did in VS Code, so here's the folder I made. I made a Python Bitcoin API folder. And I made an API key.py file. And all it's holding is a variable for my API key. And it's just storing that in a variable. Um, so off the bat, I'm just going to import that. Uh, that file. And another thing we want to import is requests. I got a new monitor, by the way. Not that you guys probably care, but it's it's 1440p. So hopefully I zoomed in enough. And it looks like I did, judging by OBS, that you were able to see everything. So those are two things I'm requesting, or I'm importing. Uh, requests and API key. Of course, you probably won't have <laughs> this unless you choose to do the same and put it in a... Uh, separate file. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make some parameters and some headers for the API call. And the header is just going to be a dictionary and it's going to be the same with parameters. And there's going to be in key key value pairs that we're going to send in. And I always forget, so I have to look at the documentation. It's not something that's easily memorable. If we go to authentication here, it'll tell us the name of the API key. So that's the key we're going to use. So let's go ahead and put that in quotes. And then we're going to do API key. Oops, API key dot. And then the variable I named was key. So that's that. And let me go back to, they have a, an example with Python, accepts with a capital A. This is where we tell it we want JSON format. Let me zoom in a little bit there. This is where it says, we want in, in JSON format to be returned. So let's do accepts with a capital A. Don't forget the capital. I made that mistake earlier. And it's application 
slash JSON. Not JSON, JSON. <laughs> JSON. And JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's just a way of formatting data for you to be able to parse and read. Um, okay, so we have headers, and let's go ahead and I'll make another dictionary called params, and this is where we're going to, oops, the key is going to be start. So this tells the API, okay, we want the top cryptocurrency, so let's start at number one, which in our case, it's gonna be Bitcoin right now, judging by the market cap, and limit. So let's give us the next five cryptocurrencies. So five. Okay, and I think there's one more, and it's called convert. And in my case, that's going to be USD. Let me make sure that's correct. I think they also do. Yeah, convert USD. So once again, this is starting at the very top. If we go back to coin market cap, uh, it's going to the top number one. That's where we start, and then it gives us five. So it should go to Litecoin, and and uh, and end there. So those are all the parameters that we need. Okay, and then let me go get the URL of the API. I lost where I was. And let's go down to cryptocurrency and listings latest. And this right here is, yeah, can we copy this? Cool. This right here is the URL. So I'll make another variable, I'll call it URL, and I'll paste it in there. And I think that's everything that we need to do. Okay, so now I'm going to create a variable and I'll name it like JSON, I guess. And that's just going to store our returned JSON object from the request. Uh, so we're going to do request dot get. I'm not sure why that didn't come up dot. Yeah, that's strange. Um, it should have come up with like IntelliSense, but Anyway, let's go URL and then params, and you have to spell it like that. And that's going to equal our params dictionary. All right, and we're also going to pass in headers, and that's going to equal headers. Is that what I named it? Yeah. So let's see, uh, I'm just going to print out the JSON. Let's see if this even works. For some reason, something tells me that it's something's off because that IntelliSense or whatever they call it in VS Code. Um, it didn't do anything. Uh, response 200. Oh, yeah, and then dot JSON. We're going to turn the response, or we're going to get the JSON response. Okay, yeah, it does work. Um, so here's part of the issue of getting JSON back. It, it gives you this whole big blob, and when you print it like that, without any formatting, it's pretty hard to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. And there are extensions in VS Code that I was looking uh, that allow it to be, they call it PrettyFy or Pretty, and it just formats it so it's easier to read. But just in case you're not using VS Code, Google JSON Formatter. And this one will probably come up as the first uh, result. And you can just paste the JSON that it prints out, hit process, and it formats it just like so below. So this is a lot easier to read than that big blob that we saw that was printed out. So here's the JSON object. And you can see there's objects inside of the main object. This is the main object, this, this squiggly brace. And what we care about, we don't care about the status object. That's just the status of the call. Um, we care about the data. And you can see inside the data is actually a list. That's what this square bracket means. And the first item is all of this stuff about Bitcoin. So if we minimize the first item, second item is Ethereum, Tether, uh, Ripple, and Litecoin. All right. Now you can see how this works. Uh, inside data are all of the five cryptocurrencies. So what I want to do is I want to print out the symbol of each. And then a little farther down, you can see inside quote object and inside the US dollar object, there's a price. Um, name and then a value, and that's what we want to extract. So I want to get, I want to print out the symbol, so BTC for Bitcoin, and then I also want to print out beside it the price of it right here, and then the other cryptocurrencies. So what I can do 
is let's create another variable. Let's call this uh, coins. And what we're going to do is we're going to go coins is equal to JSON, so the big JSON response. Let's look back at this data, and that's it. Um, we're just going to get all of the different coins, so it's just data. So to do that, uh, you put in quotes and then data. So just to show you, eh, maybe I won't print it out just because it'll end up looking a lot like this, but you guys can trust me. So now we can do 4x in coins. In other words, we're going to loop through every single object in data, you know, 1 through 5, and we can then extract the symbol and then the price. So let's print, and then the first one's going to be x, and then the name was symbol. If I spell it right. All right. And then we also want to print the price, and the price goes down a little bit deeper, so I'll have to go back because I already forget. It goes quote, USD, and then price. So in order to do that, um, we do quote, and it's in square bracket. And then a separate square bracket, USD all capitalized, and then price. So hopefully this works. Um, let me clear this down here so we get all of that out of the way. And let's just go ahead uh, and run it. Boom. There we go. That's the current price of all of the top five cryptocurrencies. Let's try it again and just see how the numbers probably will change between now and then. 38081. Maybe it's not enough time for it to change. Yeah. It looks like Litecoin's still the same price and Ripple. So I don't know how often they update their data. Let's try it again. Ah, okay. So I just ran it again. And you can see the price of Litecoin is different. I think the price of Bitcoin, 38081. And this one's 38109. So you can see that actually update. It looks like it updates maybe every 20 seconds, every 30 seconds, um, something like that. So yeah, this is um, this is how I would call and display the top cryptocurrencies. And let's say you just wanted Bitcoin out of all this. How would I do that? Well, what I would do is I would do something like if um, x symbol is equal to, and then the symbol for Bitcoin, BTC, then I would display x, I would display this. And the reason I'm I'm telling you guys this is because you might you might just want to hard code that. You might want to say, oh, coin zero, that's going to give us the um, the object, the first object, which is Bitcoin. But how coin market cap works, it it ranks them by market cap, as I told you before. And it's probably not very likely, at least in my opinion, but let's say Ethereum overtakes Bitcoin in market cap. Then, if you hard code it like that, um, you will receive the wrong value because you'll be getting Ethereum if you do coin zero. Meanwhile, if you do a comparison, you say, okay, well, if the symbol's equal to BTC, then we know we have the right object. And willing, that has to be in the top five, which I think it will be. But anyway, uh, just the more you know. So anyway, guys, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a shot. Uh, hopefully you can do this, and um, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.